thanks for joining me in another video. First of all, thank you to one of my viewers for letting me borrow their brand new Tesla. If you have an EV I can review, let me know at info at kaizv.com. Today we are comparing a 2019 Standard Range Plus Tesla Model 3 to a new 2022 Rear Wheel Drive Model 3. The name changed over recently, however the Standard Range car made many iterations before becoming the Rear Wheel Drive. This information should be helpful if you're on the fence about buying a new or used Model 3. If you're a current owner, maybe you're thinking about whether it's worth it to upgrade to a newer model year right now. So I hope this helps. Tesla unveiled the Model 3 in 2016 and they started production in 2017. Both of these vehicles behind me were produced out of the Fremont factory in California. One of the most notable changes over the years is not something physically on the car. I'm talking about its price. The standard range started at $35,000 and the long range started at $45,000 and autopilot was optional. As of July 2022, the price for a rear wheel drive Model 3 is $46,990 and a long range is $57,990 and autopilot is included in the price. Other than the noticeable chrome deleted trim, there are many other changes that have been made, so let's go through those. Starting off with the exterior, this is my 2019 Tesla Model 3. When I ordered it, it was called the Standard Range Plus. Since then, the name has been changed and all new cars of this trim are called Rear Wheel Drive. At one point, there was a mid-range rear wheel drive vehicle which was nicknamed the Lemur. It actually surprised many people when they offered it as an option. As I mentioned briefly, new Tesla vehicles have switched to a black trim instead of a chrome finish. The black trim is all around the windows, door handles, and camera housings. We first saw the chrome deleted design on the Model Y, then it was brought on to the Model 3, and even the S and X. Speaking of colors, the standard exterior color that's included with the purchase of the vehicle has shifted over time as well. When I purchased, black was the included paint color. A few years later, they switched to pearl white, and now you can pick either pearl white or midnight silver metallic. The headlights have been updated as well using the new matrix lights. In the new car, the windows are double pane glass. I don't have this in my car, but the difference isn't drastic. Overall, this dual pane window should help a bit with wind noise reduction. The front and trunk have had some modifications. The one I am envious of is a powered liftgate. If you're buying an older year Model 3, you will get what I have, which is just a manual trunk. Not that it's totally necessary, but it is a lot cooler having it open on its own during the Tesla light show. Looking at the front, the storage compartment shape is a little different and the newer Model 3 doesn't have grocery hooks anymore. If you were to order a Model 3 today, you'd have a few wheel options. For the rear wheel drive and all wheel drive, you can choose between the 18 inch aero wheels or the 19 inch sport wheels. The performance has a 20 inch Uber turbine wheels. The aero wheel cover has a refresh design and you can always switch to the newest design by purchasing them from the Tesla shop as they become available. One other change is the car actually got heavier over time. In 2019, it weighed in at 3,552 pounds and it currently weighs 3,862 pounds. Time for an obscure observation. On the older cars, if the roof got rained on, it would glow an orange-red color. The UV coating is still present, but it doesn't glow a cool color anymore. The side repeater camera housings also have been updated, as they now have a lip on the side to keep them from getting dirty. On to the last exterior change I wanted to point out. Around 2020, a regulation went into full effect in the US requiring new electric vehicles to have a speaker on the exterior of the car, which would emit sounds while driving at low speeds. This was put in place to alert pedestrians of the car's presence. So if you're driving slow or we put the newer car in reverse, you can hear the sound. My vehicle was made before September 2019, so there is no reverse or low speed sound since I have no external speakers. Moving on to the good stuff, the battery and performance of the Model 3. The early 2019 Model 3 has an EPA range of 240 miles. Later 2019s have a range of 250 miles. There is a nice range increase. The 2022 gets an EPA range of 272 miles. Part of this increase is due to the addition of a heat pump. 
A heat pump is significant for an electric vehicle as it works to capture heat energy in the ambient air rather than generating itself. Older models use resistive heaters which work in the same manner as a space heater. There have been some changes on the car with regard to the batteries they're using. Tesla is still using the 2170 form factor cells, but they are completely different chemistry. In the 2019, it has nickel manganese cobalt cells which are still used in the long range cars today. The 2022 is using lithium iron phosphate cells. These cells have a lower power density and a lower power output, but they're said to last longer over time and have no issues with being charged up to 100% daily. With the NMC packs, it's recommended to only charge up to 90% regularly, but going up to 100% for trips is fine. The 12 volt battery has been replaced with lithium ion. It no longer uses lead acid. The onboard charger is still the same and can charge the car at up to 32 amps. The maximum charging rate has gone down by 5 kilowatts. The 2019 is capable of charging at up to 175 kilowatts and the 2022 is limited to 170 kilowatts. This is likely due to the change in chemistry for the new pack. One neat thing about the 2022 model is that it can now support CCS charging with an adapter. Currently, Tesla doesn't sell the adapter in the US, but you can get one from overseas and from what I've seen, it worked without issues. With CCS capability, you can now charge at other non-Tesla DC fast chargers like EVgo and Electrify America. How quick are these vehicles? My 2019 is estimated to do 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Unfortunately, the rear wheel drive is a little bit slower. The 2022 Model 3 is now estimated to do 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. A little sacrifice in speed, but there was a gain in range. No worries here, whether you get a used or new Model 3, you'll still be instantly passing many vehicles. That jolt feeling with acceleration is always there with EVs. The interior has gone through some major changes, but there are a few subtle changes that aren't obvious at first glance. On the new Model 3, the center console has been updated and now features a sliding storage bin. The two phone spots up front support wireless charging right from the factory. The USB ports in the central console have been replaced with USB Type-C ports as well. These ports support quick charging depending on your phone model. There is still one USB-A port and it's hidden in the glove box and it's primarily used for your dash cam drive. On the door there is now an extension of the wood from the dash. I really like this accent, I think it's a good addition. On to some more subtle changes. The steering wheel is currently made using vegan leather. The seats in the Model 3s were always made of vegan leather, but the steering wheel used to be made of genuine leather. The squirrel wheels are now made of metal instead of plastic. This car is no longer using piano black plastic anywhere. Thank you Tesla for listening to us. All of the piano black has been replaced by matte black. This should make the car more fingerprint and dust resistant. I know if I don't clean my car constantly, it can look pretty dirty because of the gloss finish. The door opening buttons have gotten a much needed update and now display a top down view of the little car with its door open. This should make it much easier for passengers to know how to get out of the car. The screen in the center is the same, measuring in at 15 inches in size, but the computer behind it has changed quite a bit. In 2019, the computer was powered by a measly Intel Atom, and now we've got an AMD Ryzen. Additionally, the SR Plus came with the Autopilot 2.5 computer. These new ones are now using version 3, other known as the FSD computer. This computer is much snappier and loads up things like the internet browser and games much faster. Both of these cars receive software updates regularly from Tesla, which offers feature improvements, new games, and other functionalities. In the back seats, there have been very few changes. The door trim has been updated with the same matte black as we saw in the front. The USB ports have been updated to use USB-C. And now the rear heated seats come included in the car. Previously, heated seats were an upgrade that you had to pay extra for. Doing a quick drive, not much feels different between mine and the newest version. I feel like I hear the same amount of cabin noise, which I always felt that the Model 3 was a little more noisy inside compared to other EVs. There is one setting that no longer exists on the new Model 3s, which is the ability to adjust the regenerative braking level. On my vehicle, you still have the choice of switching from low and standard. Personally, I have never switched this to low. I always have it on standard. I think having this option taken away makes things simpler, though I know many would still like to be able to control their region level. The ride is still adequately firm and overall very fun to drive whether you buy new or used. Tesla FSD driving beta started adding more drivers to the program in 2021 and Tesla began transitioning to Tesla Vision. 
This meant starting with May 2021 deliveries of the Model 3 and Model Y, these vehicles would no longer have radar equipped and they would rely solely on the cameras. Cars in 2022 all came with autopilot included. If you would like, you can upgrade to enhanced autopilot for $6,000 or grow up to full self-driving for $12,000. Another option is to subscribe monthly to the service rather than paying up front. Other changes are having to purchase a charger separately. Luckily, when I purchased my vehicle, the mobile connector was included with the delivery of the car. If you were to purchase a car today, you'd have to purchase the mobile connector separately or as an add-on. The price of this right now is $200. I hope that was helpful in reviewing updates and changes to the Model 3 over the years. Even though the car mostly looks the same from the outside, there are a ton of quality of life changes on the inside. All we need now is an automatic frunk. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more V content and follow me on social media at KaiZV and Kai's Tesla. Kai is my dog. And check out my website for more of your resources at kaizv.com. That's all for now, and happy charging.